In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Shit's getting weird. Heart Infinity. You may remember just this week, we told you about Cleveland Clinic starting a clinical trial testing psilocybin for depression. Now the results from an LSD study that were part of that trial have come out. Yeah, the Cleveland work, uh, the clinic rather, worked with biotech company MindMed, who today say they just received breakthrough therapy status from the FDA. So they found a single dose of LSD helped people dealing with generalized anxiety disorder. The status means the drug showed efficacy in an unmet need. However, it does still need further testing, they say. <clears throat> Listen. I'm not saying that it may not work. I'm not saying that they haven't found something that maybe I don't know about. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying I have concerns. A high potential for abuse. I, I have concerns. I have concerns. I have concerns. That's it. There's got to be a natural way somewhere. I, I don't know. I don't, suffer, I don't suffer from anxiety, but I know people that do. Now, for the people that do, chime in on this. But I have concerns. I'm with this individual. I feel like there is probably other ways to get the same effects than this. Personally, I think mushrooms like psilocybin based products, I think are probably fairly beneficial in small to micro doses and or large doses if you want to have a crazy time. But on the side of LSD, leave a comment on your thoughts because I am interested in your theories and your concerns or your beliefs about this product. And if you have any recommendations for products that are more beneficial than a substance like this. Show you something right now. Whoa! The plate is attached to a cable. You see this right here? Yeah. He'll, from inside, as soon as he enters the toll, he's going to pull the lever. So he pulls the lever. And look what happens. And I'll check pipe. out the plate in the, the rear. He has it on a pipe that runs a cable that pulls it from the inside also. And I'm going to show you right here. Look what he did. Is there a reason why you put some type of cable that oh. runs from inside the truck, secured to the tag, so when you can pull the tag, because I'll follow that cable. You want me to follow it? Just like that, he's going to start paying tolls again. Next time you're going to pay, right? Yep. Yeah? yeah? No more cheating. No, no. Now take a look at the license plate on this car. This plate has a cover on it that distorts the numbers if you see it from the side or from above. Trooper Tahera removed the cover and showed us how it works. And look, the driver's wearing a uniform. Turns out, she's a corrections officer. Heaven forbids if someone tries driving across country and not wanting to get robbed by the government. But all seriousness, this is kind of messed up. I understand the reasoning and needs for a license plate for maybe you ran someone over and that was the only way to identify your vehicle. I understand having a license plate. But to have to pay toll roads, what's the necessary point of it? That's kind of highway robbery, if you ask me. Uh, we already pay enough in tax dollars. It should cover not needing to pay tolls. It's kind of like just tipping the system in a way to just say, hey, here you go. Here's some money for me to be able to drive from place to place. It, it's really ridiculous. There it is. UFO. The UFO. It sucks like about to pass over here. We're about to catch it. If I can get out fast enough, I definitely catch it. I don't know if this was based off of a movie or what, but that was probably the best UFO sighting I've ever seen on camera, if it wasn't fake. I'm sure it probably is, and I don't know what movie this is off of, or whatever it may be, but that was pretty convincing looking. If you have any information on this particular video, please let me know in the comments down below because that was like really good. So you should never try to play musical chairs alone. What's wrong with playing musical chairs? So apparently this is one of the most dangerous games. Like people advise others to never even try this. But all you have to do to play is have a match, a chair, and a recording of the song Tiptoe Through the Tulips. Like you know that super creepy song? I absolutely hate that song. So first, you can only play this game between midnight and 3 a.m. And you need to be in a super dark room with no lights. And you need to close the door. And then you put the chair in the middle of the room. And you hold a match in your hand. But you don't light it. 
yet. Okay. Then you start the recording of tiptoe through the tulips and you walk around the chair six times super slowly. And if the music stops, you sit down as fast as possible and you light the match. And that means you won the game. So you're done. But if the music keeps playing, that means nobody wants to play with you. And this is where it could get really dangerous. So if the chair starts to tip over, that means you're supposed to run out of the room as fast as possible and never go back in that room ever again by yourself. <laughs> There's a couple of things to this video that it's just like, I don't know, because one, tiptoe through the tulips, very disturbing song, especially listen slow motion. I personally like the song. I think it's a fun song, but it does have a creepiness to it. I don't know if there's some kind of hidden background message behind it or not, but it isn't a bad song. It's just a little odd, especially listen to it slowed down. It's really, really off-putting. But who comes up with this idea and or concept of playing musical chairs by themselves in a dark room with a candle? When you light the candle, that means you win the game if the music cuts off. Like, that's a whole lot of depth going into this. So I would love to know who comes up with that idea. And also with that being said, do you believe in this type of activity or behavior to happen like in the paranormal world if you were to do something like this? Me personally, I don't think I would want to do it because that just sounds like you are inviting something in for a bad time. And normally when anything evolves with more than one person and you do it by yourself in this kind of way, just seems like it's asking for bad effects to happen to me. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you look at this graph here, you'll see that 18% of the viewers that watch my videos are actually subscribed, while 80% plus are not subscribed, but still keep coming back for more of my content. So to those 18% that are subscribed, thank you so much. And the game developer sucks because you work 10 years on a project and pick a great launch date and and get everyone hyped about it and build a bunch of marketing and then ea can drop 11 games right after you do immediately and bump you off of new and trending despite the good reviews despite people purchasing it and just completely wreck all of your marketing so hey Happy International Women's Day. Thanks. I definitely understand where something like this could be very upsetting. You know, you work super hard, especially 10 years on a game, for it to just get bumped down into the Steam library because of other major industries basically outweigh you. That does suck. This individual was pretty clever with how she did her, her tactic. She wanted to promote her game, and she did it in a sad way. Like, she's on TikTok basically crying that her game got bumped down out of the top 10 because of other major labels. And this video that she created has over 500,000 likes on it. So this was a really good marketing strategy that hopefully worked well for her. Whoa, that's a cool TV. Huh? And a TV reflection. You see, this is why I say most people are uneducated about the spiritual world and about demons too. And the dad just laughed it off. So in this video that I'm stitching, you clearly see that the chow has a double ganger. Another entity appears. So this chow has an attachment, a demon with it, that mimics its form, causing a double ganger. And you'll constantly hear me say, demons will go after children before adults. Because kids are the easy targets. They're easier to possess. They're easier to trick. So when your child has an imaginary friend, or they see a person in a closet or under the bed, they're not lying. It's a demon. So yes, TVs are a good way to see uh, what's in your home if you are spiritually awoke and can see shit like that. Because TVs act as a scrying mirror, which means it lets you see with the what you can't see. I just recently, not long ago, have heard about black mirrors and that they are kind of like a portal to another dimension or a evil dimension, if you will, to the spirit realm. And I find it pretty interesting because basically all of our devices are black mirrors, if that's the case. Like, I have a TV right over there that's a constant black mirror. I have three TVs in front of me that are basically constant black mirrors, including my phone. So, it just makes me wonder if that's the case. Do these organizations that are creating these devices know 
that this is a thing and they're just risking the lives of people or they just know and they want people to become possessed. It could also be the reason why kids are so heavily distracted in their tablets, TVs, things like that as well, including adults, honestly. Like, I noticed if you scroll through TikTok or shorts or anything that's really fast-paced content, you get sucked into it and you just want to keep scrolling until you find the next best thing. And is that an effect from it being a black mirror, you know? That's pretty interesting. And I definitely seen that that kid had two reflections down at the bottom of that TV as the kid was looking at the reflection. And that's pretty crazy. But I've never seen any crazy things happen in my black mirrors, if you will. Well, leave a comment down below letting me know what you think about black mirrors or if you think that it's not real or do you think that maybe it's not necessarily TVs but black mirrors really exist like obsidian for example that probably could be utilized as a black mirror ask this without just ask it dude well i don't i don't want to lead you on into an answer or oh, something oh gotcha gotcha okay so the number does that mean anything to you we can't talk about this on the show. Oh, okay. The answer is yes. Oh, okay. Well, long story short, I am at, at this place and you're there. And the, this one I text you about the cloak figures. You don't remember that? Just keep talking. I, I, it's just a house and it's kind of sitting way back from like these other houses. And there's these cloaked looking things that are following you that's all i really remember about it god dude that was super real that's my house bro that's my house that's my house number <laughs> and my house sits back off the road this is the first time that anybody's ever said anything to me that they have a message for me that has actually followed through on confirmation and i'm not scared I'm I'm drawn I'm driven to tears right now because this is the first time I've ever had anybody on my show who says things like God told me and I didn't have that confirmation. This was pretty interesting that that individual had a dream of that other individual at their house and were able to actually give them their house number not even knowing what their house number was. Now, unless there was some deep research on this individual, because I don't know who these two individuals were at all, there could have been deep research from this one guy and he could have like stalked him a little bit to get that information, but it really seemed genuine to me. But who knows? What do you guys think of this? Do you think that that guy really had like a divine dream scenario of these cloaked figures? looming around this individual's house in terms would also be kind of considered like a remote view in a way from the samsung galaxy s24 ultra commercial and i want to explain to you why this is the apocalypse <laughs> this this is skynet it's been a good run humanity it's over he taps the guy who's in it and removes the first him is you can tap or draw around anything you yeah, want the interesting thing is that's the he, he clicks so generate right it's built in for when you yeah. wanted to remove Look at this. unwanted people or objects from the background as you can see here. Okay. He removes the guy outright and what's behind him? Nothing. The AI created a fake image. This means photos are going to be created. We're beyond filters with the advent of the S24. And it's not just the S24. Apple, the iPhone is doing this too, but we are in this era now. The phone, the pictures that are stored on people's phones are all going to be fabrications and imitations of reality, meaning we are no longer recording what's really going on. We are manufacturing fake records of, of, of events. Maybe I'm not taking this as serious as it should be, but to me, that's not that big of a deal. I've been using Photoshop for almost 15 years, and it's kind of just second nature to me to be able to alter images and be able to manipulate things in images to my image and the simple fact that phones can do it even easier than what i can do it now is just impressive to me and not really scary in that factor what do you think about this so speaking of china being ahead of the future and kind of doing things 10 or so years before us this is what's happening in parts of china now kids playing this new game that's probably going to go pretty damn viral around the world, but they're doing it first. And I'm a little bit worried about maybe this being some kind of training. And these kids are probably going to be pretty damn good at it. 
you know, if you just give them a real one of these uh, pew pews, I don't know why. Um, so I thought about this, like I thought with the AR goggles and that will start having like Fortnite in real life and whatnot. So don't be surprised if you start to see these start, these systems start to pop up around the world in many, many locations and they're training kids for like urban guerrilla warfare. Just letting you know this is happening and this is something to be aware of. And actually, I think it's kind of cool. I'd like to play it, to be honest, but just I know it's not good. That is crazy looking to see a bunch of kids running around with PP90s in their hands. I, I think that that is a very interesting and scary look. But to be fair, almost since the beginning here in America, we've done the same things. Like you can literally go out and buy toy guns. You can buy laser guns to play laser tag and all different types of weapons. And this is no different in that form. It just looks really intimidating that those are accurate looking PP nineties. And, uh, it's really crazy to see a bunch of little kids running around with guns in their hands like that. Now, do I think it's a good thing? Uh, not necessarily. It can desensitize a kid to an adult, uh, to be more, less aware of the dangers of guns because this is fun to them and guns really aren't supposed to be fun in my opinion but this is pretty wild to look at i'm not gonna lie do you know that you're a musician so that's why i'm interviewing you today so i can get to know you so i'm a musician mm -hmm. what the fuck that mean make magic or something what is musician i think that's i think you're confusing that yeah i'm not no musician i, I make music I make I, music, I, um, and that's not all I do. I make music, I act. I'm a TV star, too, a young mom. Uh -huh. I, just really quick, I think you're confusing. I'm not confusing nothing, because I, you, you don't know. I, you thought that all I was was a magician, or whatever the fuck you said. See, that's what I think you think I said. No, I said musician, I think, not what, magician. I don't think, baby, I don't think. What I, is that? That's ghetto. I don't think. I know. So you, you think. I didn't say magician, Suki. I said musician. And I think you are a musician. No, baby, I do music. So you just really, just really quick for the record, could you say you don't think you're a musician? I'm not none of that. But then after that, you just said I do music. Yeah, I do music. So in other yeah. words, you're a musician. No, I'm not. Okay. I don't know if this individual was just joking around, but <laughs> when they said that they don't think, they just do. I'm like, wow. If you plan on sleeping tonight, please don't watch this. Also, if you just smoked a large bowl of cereal, please don't watch this. Put it in your saved folders for later when you got time. Because you're going to need a lot of time to think about stuff. Because I'm about to fuck your whole world up. Okay, so you know how VR systems are been out and now we're moving into spatial computing goggles, things like that. Well, turns out that this technology is going to increase and increase and increase. So just like the cell phone, we all kind of instinctively knew that we would be FaceTiming each other eventually. So what do you think virtual reality simulations of the future will be like? Do you think we will use our hands to zoom in and out? Maybe we'll just use our eyes. Do you think it will be able to connect to voice recognition? Of course. What about if it tapped into our mind. What if we were able to finally locate where the human mind is? Because fun fact, we don't know where it's located and we were able to connect it to the virtual reality simulation. Now here's where it gets trippy. What if we already are in that most advanced simulation? Because on the quantum level, everything is happening simultaneously. And when AI becomes super intelligent, it's going to create the most insane, super intelligent virtual reality simulation of all time called the universe and the human robotic structure. What's your thoughts of this? Do you think that eventually our minds will get taken to a whole nother level of existence in a different realm when technology becomes so advanced? Or do you think that we're just going to stay kind of where we are with technological advancements? Look, look at this shit. I had to share this with you guys. Look at this, look at this, hold on. This is really a campaign speech trying to get the Democratic Party there, which I think he missed a big opportunity with it. You know, just Democrats piping up online, uh, some prominent Democrats. Want to see that again? He's back in it. Hold on. To your point. He missed the big Look at that. 
We're going back a little more. If they were, they would have felt pretty secure about where Ready? They Look at this. this is really Why is he carrying around a Mr. Potato Head picture? What is that? <laughs> that is pretty funny. I do not know what that's all about. There's a couple of things about that video. One, maybe a kid gave it to him and he's just holding it because it's it, it was just a nice thing of the kid to do and he, he just found it charming and, and respectful. That's my guess, but I really don't know. And those people that Joe was talking to, they look like vampires, did they not? <laughs> they figured out a magic wand that can put out fires instantly using just electricity. Why aren't we funding this? Look at this. They figured out that if you apply large electric fields to fire, it can suppress it very rapidly. You could also shape it and basically become a firebender, but that's a story for a different day. We've known about electricity for at least 200 years, and we've known about fire for a lot longer than that, and we're just now figuring this out. They did a study where they connected a high-powered electrical amplifier to a wand-like probe and shot beams of electricity at an open flame more than a foot high. The result, the magic wand snuffed the flame out instantly. Bada bing, bada boom, bibbity, bobbity, boop, no fire for you. This wasn't even in the recent news. No, I was Googling what if I put electricity in fire to see what would happen. And here we are. Imagine if there was a house fire, the fire department could just show up, set up like a little grid of amplifiers around your house, turn it on and bam, fire off. They could just turn the fire off in a second. Instead of sprinklers causing millions of dollars in property damage on their own, they could have something like a sprinkler system, but it's really just a laser electric thing that like detects where there's a fire and zoom, snuffs it out instantly. This is the future. This is now. Why aren't we funding this? It would probably be a really dangerous system to have so much electricity just free forming around fire. I I'd honestly don't know. This one's a tough one. I've seen electricity cause electrical fires, so I really don't know how this works, but interesting nonetheless. If you think getting fresh local products like raw milk is hard now, what I find really concerning is that by 2027, the US government is set to make every piece of livestock, predominantly cattle at this point, marked with an EID ear tag. I understand wanting to keep track of cattle, especially cows that are being used um, for livestock shows and traveling every weekend for a biosecurity standpoint. Totally understand that. But what I don't understand is why you need to know about my cows that never leave this farm, except for when they're going to their final step in their productive life. Personally, I think the entire purpose of this movement is so that the U.S. government can keep track of just how much livestock is out there so that they then know just how much lab-grown meat they need to produce to compete with our cattle markets. This is going to be mandatory at some county fairs as early as this year. Who is going to pay for these tags that I now have to put in my cow's ear? Am I, the farmer, going to be allowed to tag these animals or do I have to hire some kind of professional to come in and do it so that it can be properly documented? And I better not be paying for it. And if I'm not paying for it, guess who is paying for it? Taxpayer dollars. So guess who's still paying for it? Me and you. We as farmers have to stand up. It's not my dad's generation's responsibility anymore. And if we don't do something about this and use a voice and tell them that this isn't acceptable for monitoring your farmers, where are we gonna be 20 years from now? We all know that the government just wants what's best for us. <laughs> I couldn't even say that with a straight face. It is ridiculous on how much control the government wants for our own livelihood. They want to measure every little aspect of it. I think that the government wants full control of everything that we have because they want us to not have anything but make it feel like we have something. What's your thoughts on this? I personally don't think it's right. If you have personal cattle for your own benefit, you shouldn't have to tag them. You shouldn't have to have all these regulation and rules abided to them. I think that is really reaching a little bit too far. Rich people do one thing different than middle class people or poor people. And it's not how much money is in their bank account or even how much money is in their pocket or how they spend it. By the way, my name is Leslie. I did not come up with this concept, but like most things that I've learned on my journey, um, someone else did and I've learned to embrace it. 
So the number one thing that rich people do is they see the function of money for what it actually is. Let me give you an example. So poor people think that money is to pay off their bills and to keep themselves out of debt. They work for someone Monday to Friday, nine to five, and this is sort of a great way to scrape by in life. Now, middle-class people, they believe that money is to build your credit and that they just get bigger and bigger loans from bigger institutions that they will pay off over time. These are the people that get so excited about the credit score of 800, like, woohoo! so that they can buy bigger houses and bigger cars or whatever. This is not the function of rich people. On the other hand, understand that the function of money is expansion. You should use your money to make more money. Instead of buying more things that people don't really need, um, they expect every single dollar they make to earn them more money. Every single dollar they have is like a little tiny soldier that's going out there and making them more money or getting them more land or more territory. And they're like little worker warriors, you know? I mean, they're like, bring that money home to mama. And for all those gents out there, bring it home to daddy. And only when you start to see money for what it actually is, a method of expansion, because let's face it, folks, the universe is expanding. Fact. You are part of the universe. Fact. Your money is an energy that you brought into your experience. Fact. And therefore, in order for your money to be the happiest money possible, it needs to be doing what you need to be doing, which is what the universe is doing, which is expanding. And when you see money as a vehicle for your own expansion, then the opportunities for you to make more money or expand just start presenting themselves for you to take. And if you're ready to start expanding, then start right here by giving me a follow. It's extremely hard to save your money to expand it. You have to have money to expand. How do you expand? You want to live under a bridge and not have anything in the process? Now, I get not going out and buying the nicest cars and the nicest house and things like that. I personally save a lot of my money and then once I reach a certain threshold, I'll buy whatever I want. Like if I want a new TV, okay, well every check that I get, I'll save $20 and you know, within a year or two, I'll get my TV because that's how it works for me. And I do like to expand my money personally, but I save my money in a spot to be able to do so. That's not the case for everybody. And for someone to say, oh, well, this is what you have to do. You, you just can't do that because not everyone has that ability. What is your thoughts on this? Because to me, it's not as easy as this individual makes it sound. It really is not. And it's almost, it's almost belittling in a way for someone to think that way, I, I also think. So let me know in the comments on your beliefs on this one. Do you know why these fucking boomers are so comfortable doing this stuff blatantly? They did it to us our whole lives. You grew up going, mom, this really hurt my feelings. Dad, you're really hurting me. And they went, it could be worse. At least I give you food. At least I give you clothing. At least you go to school. You could be homeless. I could be, but those are your responsibilities. You're my parents. You're supposed to take care of me. Do you know how many times I went back and forth with those dipshits going, you guys are insane for hurting and traumatizing kids and going, mm, but it could have been worse. It could have, but it was still bad. Nobody wins in this. Who fucking cares if those boomers get to keep their money for another three years before they kick the bucket? Then it goes down to the next set of geriatrics. Then it goes down to the next set of geriatrics. And by the time we get it, we have no idea what to do because we've been boxed in our whole lives. At the end of the day, who gives a fuck who's the superpower in charge? The only reason the United States needs to hold so tightly to that is because they've thrown so many fucking punches they can't afford to drop the military because everybody wants to beat their fucking ass. Our government is the shitty ass parents that didn't give a fuck about us as kids. It's not surprising they're still doing it. Dang, that was a lot of anger right there that's been pent up, I have a feeling. To go off on another side note about the military and how they can't just let loose because everyone wants to beat them up, I truly think that 
there is higher powers in the, the governments of those countries that have those militaries that are just fine with each other in a way. They just enjoy the war. They enjoy playing a game of chess with each other that way because they have so much control over the capital. I do not necessarily think that it, there probably will never be a world where there will never be war. I have a feeling that's something that's just always going to be. It always has been. But to her claims about how her parents raised her and things like that, I went through the same thing personally, but it didn't affect me that greatly. <laughs> There's this really bizarre set of ruins off of the western tip of Cuba. In the early 2000s, they found these incredibly bizarre ruins at 2,000 feet underwater. So there were marine engineers hired by the Cuban government to go search off of western Cuba using sonar to find shipwrecks and gas deposits. They were surveying in this massive sandy plateau that was literally like miles and miles and miles long with no rocks or anything. And they come across this set of structures that is 11 and a half by 11 and a half miles. They used sonar recreation to create what's on the floor. They found this and they were baffled. So Iteralde goes with him. He's a geologist from Cuba and they go with a submersible. He dives down and they analyze it. And he says he's completely baffled by it and that it's not natural by any means. And that the structures look like a series of streets, temples, pyramids, that entire civilization, whatever, just sink to the bottom of the ocean, which is exactly how it's described. That's pretty interesting. I, I hope that this is true information because I would like to really see more about those renders and everything that they showed there with the uh, sonar rendering. Because if that's the case, that's really interesting. Now, I don't know if I would necessarily believe that they sank to the bottom of the ocean, but it could very well be that the ocean was not as high as it was in that time frame. This was pretty interesting. I hope it's real because I would like to see more about this. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links will be down in the description below. I don't know how much longer TikTok has because it was running rough today. But with that being said, have a good day.